Welcome back. Now, Radwater has disproved claims that its system is on the brink of collapse, but is trying to mitigate against any potential collapse. The entity is seeing high consumption straining what is a, it's able to supply. Johannesburg is currently observing a level one water restriction, which will continue until 31 March 2024. But Randwater is still seeing high consumption levels. Randwater CEO Sipo Masai joins us now to unpack the state of Gauteng's water ecosystem. Thank you so much for your time, Sipo. Of course, the, yeah, the population of South Africa is on high alert because we know how the electricity ESCOM situation unfolded where we were told to panic for a number of years until things got really, really bad. So, you know, just, just speaking you know, in, in, in real terms, how dire is the situation uh, when it comes to the water crisis in Johannesburg? Is day zero a possibility? Yeah, um, good afternoon, Zinati. The, I think from where we're sitting as the bulk water producer, we don't anticipate the, the day zero situation um, in the short, medium, and possibly in the long term, given the current state of um, the water storage in, in the dams. I think just to contextualize rainwater in terms of our business model, what we do, we buy water from the Department of Water and Sanitation, and we purify it and sell it in bar uh, to municipalities. And municipalities take that water and distribute it into, into households. So we don't supply consumers with water, but uh, the municipalities with the, with bulk so we are wholesalers so, so in terms of our outlook um in the shortest possible term um day zero is a function of um insofar as my interpretation is concerned is the inability to supply water because there's just no water in the dams uh, but the prognosis look good um insofar as um what we have in the dams for this summer and possibly the next uh, two or so but with climate change, it's very difficult to forecast in the longest possible terms. But in the shortest possible term, we don't anticipate a day zero situation yeah. up here in Fauden. I mean, just from the, you know, the supplies that you get, do you think that there is enough supply to meet demand? But also, could that supply be, um, could, could, could it be inhibited by shaky infrastructure as well? From our side, I think um, we, we anticipate, we think we, we in fact, we don't think, um, we estimate that we supply water to, to about 17, um, just maybe south of that number, 17 million consumers mm. in the municipalities um, through the bulk reservoirs that we have. And we're peaking at about 5,000 million liters of water a day. And so if you were to average and take away 10% from the industry, there's plenty of water we supply close to about 300 litres per capita per day, and the world average is sitting at 173. Uh, we're almost close to double in certain areas of cap per capita per consumption. So th the water is sufficient. Yeah. And the question is, why do we have a challenge? Where, where does that water go? Mm. It's an open secret that in the distribution uh, space, in municipality space, about 60% of that water that we supply is lost. It's lost through non-revenue water, is looked uh, it's lost through leaks and really puts pressure on the system. And that is why you have pockets of suburbs in certain areas um, without water um, when we are pushing this amount and the volumes that we supply, particularly in summer months. Uh, we're going through El Nino, which means drier and warmer um, summers. Um, and then, therefore, we're seeing this um, consumption that is beyond uh, the 5,000 milliliters of water that we are putting into the system because the drier it is and the warmer it is, the more consumption we are seeing from the municipality drawing um, from, from our system. So I think to answer your question directly, you know, in, in summer, in before summer periods, an average is about 4,007. Nobody says anything. But I, we appreciate that we don't have an unlimited infrastructure to supply unlimited um, water usage. And, and what we are seeing now in summer is that the peaks are a lot more than, than our maximum capability. And that yeah. puts strain um, in certain areas. So invariably, you'll see that high-lying areas from time to time have a challenge. Low-level areas never get affected. Um, 
So that's what we're experiencing here in Gauteng. So it's not the fact that we're not putting enough water into the system. We don't have the infrastructure. We, we certainly do. Um, well, I mean, we, we, we see this peak season. Just talking about that infrastructure, I do understand that Rand Water is also working on some infrastructure projects. Just unpack that for us. But also, I'm just wondering, even if, you know, that is, you know, successful, Will it mean, can it mean that the level one water restrictions can end uh, sooner rather than later? Or will it just not be a thing because of how much water is lost between the munici municipalities and the cons consumer? Uh, but just in terms of the infrastructure point of view, before we go through the yeah. restrictions, um, these level one restrictions, um, we, as I indicated, we, we supply bulk. So yeah. we 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 have a, a total investment of about 35 billion in the next five years on our infrastructure to upgrade it, refurbish it, and augment it. Um, we've just finished two projects um, this financial year. In February, we launched a 210 megalitre reservoir, the largest post-tension pre-stress concrete reservoir in the world, just to store more water for, for the municipality that we launched in February. We just last week added um, an additional 150 million liters of water into the system, which is essentially what you see in the background um, to augment our system. We are adding another 410 um, um, next year. And beyond that, in 2030, we are adding another 600. So we, we're keeping up with the demand. Uh, so we are making all these huge infrastructure investments that we, we are putting into the system. But Zinati, you can you can produce as much water as possible. If that water is lost, mm. you're going to create problems. You know, it's not going to reach consumers. So that, that is our worry, that uh, we are putting so much water into the system. And the system is pressurized. We see the more we put, the more the leaks. And the more we put, the more the non-revenue increases. Mm. So, so it, it doesn't complete the whole cycle if we are adding infrastructure and fertilizing water only for it to, to be lost at the tail end of the water supply beyond our reservoirs. So that, that, that is a matter of concern. Ah. Um, so yes, uh, from our side, we are we will be making these investments. We are rolling the infrastructure and doing the best that we can do to meet the growth and the demand going forward. Mm. I just just in terms me. of the restrictions. Yes, no. yes, yes, you can carry on, Sibo. Just in terms of the district, uh, restrictions, sorry. Um, the, the municipalities are the ones that are imposing restrictions. And I think the ones that we supply are posing what you call level one restrictions. Mm -hmm. they, this, in my view, are not punitive. Um, they are good sound water management practices um, that everybody needs to, to abide by, um, um, that we're seeing everywhere in the world. Water your garden after sunset, before the sunrise. And that's the right thing to do, because if you do it during the day, what's going to happen? You're going to lose that water. Mm. Um, so if, if you have to, to use drinking water to water your garden. So those level restrictions are talking to taking shorter showers, um, refraining from filling your swimming pools, particularly in summer, um, with drinking water and, and covering your swimming pools and so on and so forth. Um, so they are what you call sound water management practices and there are level one restrictions. My view is that if the consumption drops um, and all those things that we're talking about are affected in the distribution network, the municipalities will pull them back. I don't anticipate that that is happening. Already in July, we had in winter, we had seen this demand going the wrong way. We, we mobilized our municipalities to start acting. And um, as I indicate, we're anticipating an El Nino, warm and dry summers. So that consumption must really come down. If if it was my way, at municipal, I would keep those restrictions, not as restrictions, mm -hmm. as sound water management practice. There's just no reason why we should have a situation where we're watering our gardens mm -hmm. in the middle of the day when all that water is going to be lost through evaporation. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Sipo. I think this is a, a really important conversation also to take further as, you know, what's highlighted, what's been interesting for me out of this conversation is knowing that you're only one of the players in that water ecosystem, but quite a lot that goes into making up that ecosystem. Thank you so much for your time. That was Sipo Mosai, CEO for Rand Water.